Hello again. Acts chapter 4. I think we can conclude the chapter in this study. I think. This is New Testament video 340. Acts lesson 16. Four. Father God, thank you for another day of grace. We ask that the Holy Spirit teach us through these inspired and preserved words of his that we read now and believe in our heart, rightly divided. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Acts chapter 4. Verse 1. Read the whole chapter. Acts 4, 1. And as they spake unto the people, the priests, and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people, and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now even tide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed. And the number of the men was about five thousand. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers, and elders, and scribes, and Annas the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power, or by what name, have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them, that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, what shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it, but that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them 
and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing, how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above forty years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed. Verse 23, our present lesson. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord, and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David hast said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, Behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which he is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. A succinct, brief, quick review of chapters 3 and 4 thus far. Remember, Acts 3 and Acts 4 are a pair. You interpret one in light of the other. Remember, this is Bible study. Study. This requires some mental effort. some skill in reading verses for ourselves, turning Bible pages and looking for cross-references. We compare Scripture with Scripture. This is not a time of entertainment, amusement, this is Bible study. This is for mature saints.
a rarity, I know. It's not a sin to be ignorant, my friend. I don't know the Bible, that's fine. At least it was confessed. If you don't know the Bible, my friend, then what you need to do is become acquainted with the Bible. The willful ignorance. Now that's a sin. I don't know anything and I don't want to know. <laughs> ah, that's a sin. A prevalent sin. Common sin. I'm right where I want to be in my understanding of the scriptures. Uninformed. Ignorant. Mm. I hope our attitude is for what saith the scriptures? I would like to know. Let me take my King James Bible and read it, and study it, rightly divide it. And meditate on it. So, there's the lame man sitting at the beautiful gate of the Jerusalem temple it is the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, three in the afternoon. Peter and John are walking to the temple. The lame man is there. From his mother's womb, he has been disabled. Every day, he's carried to the beautiful gate and sit there. He asks for alms. He's a beggar. He expects Peter and John to give him a handout. Peter responds, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And immediately, he holds his right hand. And he lifts him up. He's strengthened. Peter's first miracle in the scriptures. The man leapt up. He stands, he walks, he enters the temple with the apostles, Peter and John. He's walking, he's leaping, and he's praising God. The miracle attracts attention. So a, a multitude gathers, marveling, greatly wondering, amazed, shocked. That's the lame man. Yes. They run together in Solomon's porch 
on the eastern side of the temple. This is a preview, a picture, a foretaste of Israel's salvation, national restoration, national redemption. When Jesus Christ returns to the Mount of Olives, the eastern side of Jerusalem, tracing the same path at his second coming that he traveled 2,000 years ago on Palm Sunday, riding the donkey into Jerusalem. Except now, Revelation 19, he's on a white horse. With this miracle, Peter, or the Holy Spirit through Peter, has gotten Israel's attention in Jerusalem. And here, Peter preaches another sermon. God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob has glorified his son Jesus. That very Jesus you publicly refused before Pilate months ago. Israel, you Denied the Holy One and the Just, Acts 3.14, and desired a murder to be granted unto you. You killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. You killed Messiah, Christ, Jesus. But God has raised him up. Resurrection. He's alive. He's well. And he's ministering to you, Israel, through us, the apostles. It's by that man's name and power, Jesus Christ's name and power, that this lame man now stands before you healed. Healthy well, 17. You and your rulers were ignorant of Jesus as Christ. You didn't recognize him when he visited you. You refused to acknowledge the Father sent him to you. You considered Jesus a fraud, an imposter. Satan's ally. You were ignorant. Blind as could be. What you did to Jesus is crucifixion. You actually fulfilled Bible prophecy. What God had spoken by all his prophets. Verse 19. There is another call to repentance, a change in mind, like in Acts 
2 verse 38 Israel needed to repent Acts 3 another opportunity to think like God's people yes you were blind ignorant in the darkness but the light is here as Peter preaches to them he calls them back to the God of their fathers, patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Acts 3.19 Repent ye therefore and be converted. Turned around. You're going the wrong direction. Turn around that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Peter is preaching Jesus Christ according to a prophetic program. Prophecy. What God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. The earthly kingdom that can be traced all the way back to Adam. Christ will return to forgive, to blot out, to pardon, to remit Israel sins, the new covenant. Jeremiah 31, Romans 11, Acts 3 is prophecy. Prophecy, the prophetic program. We belong to the mystery or secret program. Romans 16, 25 and 26. That which God has kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest through the Apostle Paul's ministry and message. Romans through Philemon. God is not, 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 operating the prophetic program today. We aren't looking for prophecy to be fulfilled, but Peter is rightly so. The restitution of all things, the times of refreshing, when Jesus returns his second coming he will rectify he will right all that is wrong the curse of sin will be lifted and righteousness will reign in the earth that is not true today God is doing something else. If we don't rightly divide the word of truth, my friend, don't have a prayer in the world of ever properly interpreting the book of Acts. In order for God to be long-suffering, merciful to this wretched planet, the human race. He must postpone wrath. How he does that is by operating the mystery program. 
as long as ministry, Paul's ministry, is in effect. The times of restitution of all things, the times of refreshing, cannot be brought to pass. God is forming a heavenly people today. The church, the body of Christ, using believing Jews and believing Gentiles. No distinction. No difference. All people who trust exclusively the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ as sufficient payment for their sins, all those saints were baptized into the church, the body of Christ. God's heavenly people who will one day rule and reign for His glory in the heavenly places. That is in contradistinction to Israel as His earthly people. Moving along. Acts 3. Moses, Moses, in the law, Deuteronomy 18, foretold Father God would raise up a prophet like unto him, Moses. Him shall you hear. Those who don't hear the prophet. They will be destroyed. That prophet there, that spokesman or messenger of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. The God man you refused in Matthew to John. You did listen to that prophet. Twenty-four. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel the Davidic kingdom there, and those that follow after the Davidic covenant, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days, ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. The Abrahamic covenant. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Jesus' earthly ministry, that's John the Baptist's ministry, Jesus' earthly ministry, even the apostles' ministry in early Acts, 12 apostles, those ministries were intended, were designed to bring Israel to a place of faith in Jesus Christ. So Israel will then rise nationally to kingdom glory. And with Israel saved and blessed of God, she, her people, can be a kingdom of priests to minister to the world, the nations, the Gentiles. There's a problem. Israel announces, we don't care. We don't want to be God's kingdom of priests. We don't want our king. That's Jesus, see? So they cannot be God's kingdom of priests in the earth. And God cannot bless the world through Israel. Because Israel doesn't want to be blessed. So Peter is calling them to repentance. Think about the prophets and the covenants. In your Hebrew Bible. You people are so confused. 
You haven't got a clue. And yet you've had the Hebrew scriptures for 1,500 years. Now, we must never lift our nose. <laughs> Good issue, dear. We've had a completed Bible canon for 2,000 years. Look where we are. Does the professing church know where it is on the Bible timeline? Are they aware of God's plan for the ages? Not God's fault. He's given us his inspired, preserved words and the Holy Spirit to teach us. But what is our preference? I'm comfortable where I am. So Acts 4. Moving into Acts 4. <laughs> our time is slipping away from us. The possibility of finishing Acts 4 in this study is growing slimmer. Acts 4. So as Peter and John speak to the people, Acts 4 1. The priests, the captain of the temple, temple police, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. The rulers who rejected Christ, they tried him and insisted he be crucified. They supposedly got rid of Jesus. Oh no, oh, his, apostles, his apostles are here and they're preaching his name. And they're preaching through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. The Sadducees say there is no resurrection. And here the apostles are contradicting that theological system so prevalent in Israel. Think of the church members we're losing. We had better silence, Peter and John. Arrest them. So they laid hands on them. So they arrest the apostles. Take them into custody. Put them in jail for the night. It's late in the day, the Sanhedrin, the 71-member Jewish Supreme Court, will not convene tonight, but tomorrow they will. Many of them which heard the word believed, verse 4. The number of the men was about 5,000. 5,000 saints. But that's the remnant compared to the nation Israel of millions. The next day, verse 5, the rulers, the elders, the scribes, the so-called Bible copyists and teachers, They all have a godly facade, an exterior. They look like God's men. <laughs> I don't believe they are. 
Acts 4 verse 6. And Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander. Also the family members of the high priest. Relatives. They all gather in Jerusalem. They set Peter and John in the midst. By what power or by what name have you done this? Healed the lame man. Who gave you permission? We didn't. And we are the religious leaders here. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. The Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, addresses Israel's apostate leadership. could recover the lame man from his disease. Anyone? Only, only Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Similarly, likewise, who can save Israel from her sins? from Satan. Only Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Savior, Joshua, Joshua, Yahshua, Jesus, Savior, Christ, anointed, Messiah. It's by Jesus Christ of Nazareth this man stands here before you whole Saved, healthy, in Jesus Christ alone, there is spiritual healing for Israel. So Israel can be redeemed, restored, and become God's kingdom of priests in the earth. And by the way, you rulers, the stone you rejected has become the head of the corner, the corner stone. All that God will do with Israel throughout the endless ages to come depends solely on Jesus Christ. So you keep refusing him and you'll never be in God's will. There's destruction for you instead. 13, Acts 4, verse 13. We're slowly making our way. <laughs> Still reviewing Acts 4, 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Peter and John were ignorant and unlearned men. Unlearned and ignorant men. They're not graduates of rabbinical school. Where are their Masters and doctoral degrees. They shouldn't be preaching then. We're the scholars of religion here. Not these nobodies, Peter and John. See the contempt, the arrogance. You find that in Christendom today. 
the worship of worldly education, secular indoctrination. See, the average church denomination, they don't seek leaders who have the indwelling Holy Spirit and who are willing to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Know whom they seek are those with seminary, Bible seminary degrees, eloquence, good speakers, motivational or inspirational preachers and teachers. Yeah, that's who we want. We aren't worried about dispensational Bible study. Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. The Apostle Paul. The King James Bible. Couldn't care less about that. But who will follow us in our denominational era? Who will take orders from our hierarchy? That's who we're looking for. <laughs> the blind sheep. Just following the scholars, following the doctors, the theologians, they'd never mislead us. Hmm. Well, they misled Israel in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts. What made the difference? Peter and John were not graduates of Bible college. Men didn't teach them. Jesus Christ did. Acts 4, 14. Look at the cover-up, the dishonesty of the scholars. Scholars. <laughs> not the atheists. Not the harlots, not the publicans, the gang bangers, the pimps, the religious leaders. <gasps> Those who claim to love the Lord and love His Word. Acts 4.14 and beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them, Peter, John, and the lame man, when they commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them, that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. I love that. I love it. See, the Holy Spirit inserts this into the record of Scripture, and it's there forever. It is not an evidence problem. If only they'd see a miracle, they'd believe. But they have seen a miracle, haven't they? Yeah. They aren't believing. Instead, they're persecuting God's people. The little flock, they will continue to mistreat, abuse Israel's believing remnant. Throughout early Acts, Acts 4, Acts 5, Acts 6, Acts 7, Acts 8, Acts 9. Israel, unbelieving Israel, is wasting, spurning her opportunity to repent in early Acts, isn't she? God is extending his hand of mercy 
He is still willing to withhold the wrath. This nation deserves complete, total destruction. will be one year. Luke 13, one year. After the three years of earthly ministry of unbelief, they didn't believe. They have another year, and that's opening Acts, early Acts, to believe, to repent and believe. Except Jesus as Christ, Messiah. Are they doing that? No. The leadership? No. It's not looking good. It will only get worse. The opposition to the apostles is mounting. Remember the animosity accumulated during Christ's earthly ministry to the point of Calvary's cross. In early Acts, someone will eventually die. It's coming. We can't deny the miracle. The lame man walks. We cannot disprove it. Everyone in Jerusalem's heard about it. But what we can do <laughs> To minimize collateral damage to our theological system, we will resort to more underhandedness. Acts 4, 17. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them, that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. We'll just continue obeying God, not you. Acts 4. 21. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go. Still in unbelief, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was about 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed. Now, our present lesson. <laughs> After an hour of review, maybe we can finish the chapter. Let's see. Acts 4, 23. And being let go, they held a pity party and complained. Oh, Lord, why is this happening to us? No. Verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own company, that be the little flock, and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. They threatened us. We're not to teach. We're not to preach at all in the name of Jesus. Acts 
Acts 4.24 And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, deliver us from this persecution. We don't deserve this. No. There's a prayer offered. The little flock prays Acts 4, 24 through 30. So listen to the prayer. Acts 4, 24. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. The unity, the fellowship, prominent in early Acts. New covenant, unity, communion. They lift up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. It sounds like part of the fourth commandment. Exodus 20, verse 11. You are the creator. Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. We seek the purpose and the plan of the Creator. What is His purpose and plan for us in the earth? Acts 4, 25. Listen to the intelligent prayer of the little flock. This isn't mindless repetition of man-made creeds and denominational doctrine. This isn't just, well, let's speak to God, blah, 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 and they don't have a, an understanding of anything they're actually saying. They take the scriptures that apply to their situation and they pray in accordance with that. What God has already spoken to them. Acts 4, 25 Who by the mouth of thy servant David Hast said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. David. David was a prophet. Second Samuel 23.2 Remember Acts 1.16 The Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake. That's inspiration, the inspiration of the scriptures. Acts 2, verse 29, the patriarch David, being a prophet, verse 30, who by the mouth of thy servant David hast said, Acts 4, 25, why did the heathen rage 
and the people imagined vain things. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. They are quoting their Hebrew scriptures. That's Psalm 2. The book of Psalms. Psalm 2. Psalm chapter 2. The book of Psalms. Psalm 2. Psalm 2 has no superscription, no subtitle. Who wrote Psalm 2? We don't know in Psalms. Doesn't tell us. But the Bible is a progressive revelation, which means God withholds data, data, for a time, only to reveal it later. Decades, centuries, millennia later. Either the Lord Jesus in Luke 24, Acts 1, or the Holy Spirit taught the little flock. Psalm 2. It's application. By the way, David wrote it. We learn that not from Psalms, but from Acts 4. Psalm 2, I'll read the first, well, read the whole chapter. <laughs> Psalm 2, verse 1. Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together. It's a conspiracy against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. That is interpreted in Acts 4. The Jews and the Gentiles, the heathen there are Gentiles, the nations, the people, that's Israel, The chief priests, the high priests, Annas, Caiaphas, the elders, the rulers, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all of them, all these Jewish leaders, and Herod Antipas, and Pontius Pilate, those Roman Gentile leaders, Plus all the unbelievers in Israel, the commoners, and the Roman soldiers, and the commoners amongst the Gentiles, all of them, they have their major disagreements, but they can all settle on one statement. We hate Jesus Christ, and he will not reign over us. The heathen rage, Gentiles, nations rage. The people of Israel imagine a vain thing. Spiritually nuts. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers to take counsel together against the Lord, that's Father God, and his anointed, against his anointed, that's Christ, Mishiak in Hebrew, Christ, Christos, Greek, anointed, Messiah in Aramaic. Saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. The Lord and against his anointed, Father God and the Lord Jesus Christ, they will not control us. We will not submit to their authority. No.
Look the reply, Psalm 2, 4. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. He laughs to mock them. You're so wise. You're so powerful. In your own eyes, mere creatures. I am the creator. I'm the one in charge. Not you. Then shall he speak unto them, verse 5, in his wrath. Wrath! And vex them in his sore displeasure. Payday. Someday. That's Daniel's 70th week, by the way. And the second coming of Christ. Six, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So you notice... There's the rejection of the Lord Jesus there in Psalm 2. It was prophecy. Fulfilled prophecy. When Jesus was tried, wrongfully tried, wrongfully convicted, and wrongfully executed. They took counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, His Christ, His Messiah. Calvary. The next step in the prophetic calendar here is wrath. Wrath! Daniel's 70th week. The baptism with fire. He will make his foes his footstool. They will be destroyed from among the people. Flaming fire. Taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. At verse 6, Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Psalm 2, 6. King. Ah. Uh, oh. Kingdom. See the order? Calvary. Daniel 70th week. Wrath. Second coming. Wrath. And kingdom. Look at the two comings of Messiah Christ. Where is the church, the body of Christ? Where is the 2,000 year long age of grace? Where is Paul's ministry? Where is the dispensation of grace? Where is the mystery program? Well, it's not there because Psalm 2 is prophecy. The mystery is a secret. Salvation going to the world through Israel's fall is a secret in prophecy. You see verse 7, Psalm 2, 7. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, 
This day have I begotten thee. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Acts 13, verses 33 and 34. I have begotten thee is his resurrection. Jesus' resurrection. Look at verse 8. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. There's his reign. Jesus' is reign over all the earth. Verses 10, 11, and 12. That's an exhortation to come to Jesus Christ by faith. In the prophetic program, because he is the God man who will reign in the earth one day. They started off refusing him at the beginning of Psalm 2. They'd better get right by the end of Psalm 2. Because he's coming back. Acts 4, 26. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Against his Christ. Notice how Acts 4, 26 interpreted Psalm 2. Verse 2 for us. Or should we say Psalm 2, verse 2, interprets, explains, Acts 4, 26 for us. What does Christ mean? The title. It means anointed. Psalm 2, verse 2. Acts 4, 26. Christ in John 1, John 1, 41, John 1, 41, we found the Messiahs, which is interpreted the Christ, see, Messiah equals Christ equals anointed. The Lord's Christ, the Lord's Christ you know, there is a counterfeit Christ in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28. Lucifer. Ezekiel 28, 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Lucifer is anointed too. That's an evil being there. Oh, they talk about the anointing. Ooh, the Pentecostals, the Charismatics, the anointing, anointed music, anointed worship. Well, let's say there's a, a good anointing and a bad anointing. So the word anointing isn't necessarily good. In Matthew 24, Matthew 24, 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Satan is the master counterfeiter. He copies. He mimics. So you'll think he's doing God's work. And so you'll praise him, believing, oh, we're worshiping God. No, bringing glory to the creature, Satan. And unless we have mature spiritual discernment, we won't be able to tell the difference. In Daniel's 70th week, there are false Christs, false prophets, 
They claim they speak for God, but they don't. And look at this. They shall show great signs and wonders. They work miracles. 2 Thessalonians 2, lying wonders. Miracle working is not necessarily of the God of the Bible. There is another being in the spiritual realm who works too. He's malevolent, evil. Satan. The scriptures, Luke 2, 26, Revelation 11, 15, and Revelation 12, 10, speak of the Lord's Christ. Just like Acts 4, 26, the Lord's Christ. That's God's Christ. There are false Christs. They talk about Jesus. Oh, 2 Corinthians 11. There's another Jesus. Oh, they talk about the Spirit. There's another Spirit. They talk about the Gospel. There's another Gospel. 2 Corinthians 11, 3 and 4. You see, we, we must abandon that simplistic, childish, immature thinking. There are false gospels, false prophets, false apostles, lying wonders. If we aren't careful, we will be deceived. God will give us what we want. Acts 4, 27. See the explanation of Psalm 2? For of a truth, indeed, definitely, against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together, international conspiracy for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. The Jews and the Gentiles all cooperated. Herod, King Herod Antipas, Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel they all conspired against the Lord and His Christ, thy holy child, Jesus. Thy holy child. Okay. Holy, set apart under God's purposes. Acts 2. Acts 2. Acts 2 verse... 27, Holy One, that's Christ, verse 31, Psalm 16, verse 10, John 10, 36, Whom the Father has sanctified, set apart, that's Jesus Christ. Acts 3, 14, The Holy One and the Just, Holy One, Jesus Christ, set apart, Thy Holy Child Jesus, Acts 4, 27, in modern English versions, here's a textual note. The Greek word is translated. Servant. Your holy servant. Jesus. Even the New King James Version puts holy servant Jesus. Acts 4.27 verse 30. Thy holy child Jesus, thy holy child Jesus. Acts 4, 27 and 30. Back in Acts 3, I pointed this out. Acts 3, 13, his son Jesus. Same Greek word, 
Son. See, verse 26, Son Jesus. And the modern English versions put servant again. So four times in modern English versions, servant, 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 servant. In our King James Bible, it's son, son, child, child. The King James Bible reads stronger. That's the deity of Christ there. Son. He is God's son. See? God's child. It's not servant. Do you remember in Psalm 2, it's son. Thou art my son. See? The context here is son. The sonship of Jesus Christ is deity. See? We use our King James Bible. We stay with it. Not even the New King James Version fools us. It's not a King James Bible at all. Acts 4, 27. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, Christ, Psalm 2, 2, anointed, smeared, uh, setting apart unto an office, as in like a prophet, a priest, a king, anointing with oil. Jesus, all three, anointed with the Holy Ghost, so on. Acts 4, 28. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. We commented on that in Acts 2, 23. Acts 2, 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you, by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up. Acts 3. You denied him in the presence of Pilate. Acts 3.13. You denied the Holy One and the just. You desired a murder to be granted unto you. You killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Verse 18, And those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Before creation, the triune God, the triune Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, assembled and determined God the Son would take on a human body one day, a human nature, incarnation, and die for the sins of mankind before there ever was a mankind, before there was a creation. You read Matthew 26 and Matthew 27, Mark 14, Mark 15, Luke 22, Luke 23, John 18 and John 19. You see all the unbelievers conspiring. Apostate Israel's religious leaders, pagan Roman leaders, the chief priests, the scribes, the elders, Pontius Pilate, King Herod Antipas, all of them united against Jesus Christ. And yet, they were fulfilling Bible prophecy. 
They were in rebellion. And it doesn't take away from the fact they should have accepted Jesus as Messiah. Israel didn't. But it was written in the scriptures centuries prior. This is what would happen. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. Isaiah 53. Psalm 22. Various other passages. God wasn't taken by surprise. Jesus Christ. Not taken by surprise. Father or Son or Holy Ghost. They all knew it was coming. Calvary. Acts 4, 28. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. By the way, verse 29. And now, Lord, they're still praying. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. They've threatened us. Verse 17. Verse 18. Verse 21. Israel continues rebelling against thee, Lord. Still in unbelief. You notice, Lord, how they threaten us, your people, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. That's the end of their prayer. They need boldness in the face of opposition, satanic opposition. They aren't looking for deliverance. They're looking for boldness. Boldness. The Apostle Paul, similar. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Paul is in Rome under house arrest. That's the conclusion of Acts. Some 30 years after Acts 3 and Acts 4. Ephesians 6, 19. Pray for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Here's Paul's gospel, the mystery gospel. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Paul has been preaching that gospel for 30 years, and now he's in trouble with the law. Pray, saints in Ephesus, that I have the boldness to preach Jesus Christ more. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, chains, bound, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Okay. There's no complaining. There's no pity party. Ephesians 6, Paul, or the little flock here in Acts 4. Grant unto thy servants, Acts 4, 29, boldness, that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand, see, God's power, to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. The Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians 1, 22. Mark 16. Mark 16. The gospel of the kingdom preached 
that these signs, 17, shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God, Acts 1. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. That's Acts 2 onward. The apostles were sent, commissioned, Matthew 10. Matthew 10. As he goes, seven, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Mark 3, 14, And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out devils. Come over to Acts 2, verse 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Now, in Acts 3, there's one of those miracles. The lame man healed. The gospel of the kingdom has some signs to confirm, to validate, authenticate it. In that literal, physical, visible, earthly, Davidic, Israeli kingdom, there will be no sickness, no disease. The Jews require a sign Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. John 4, 48. Jesus is earthly ministry. The gospel of the kingdom had some confirming miracles. He taught, he preached, and he healed. Matthew 4, 23 and 9, 35. The apostles are continuing that ministry of Christ. The Holy Spirit is empowering them. Acts 2 onward. They are confirming their message, the gospel of the kingdom, with miracles, with wonders, with signs. The signs and wonders, Acts 4.30, done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. By the name, by the name, his authority, his power. Acts 3, 6, remember, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. 16, and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong. See? Acts 4, 7, by what power or by what name have ye done this? 10, be it known, Acts 4, 10, unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. 12, neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved the name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hebrews 2 and Hebrews 6, the powers of the world to come. The world to come. The millennium, the kingdom, and the ages to come. The apostles are preaching that kingdom over which Jesus is king. That was the same gospel message Christ proclaimed during his earthly ministry. Acts 4, 
31, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Their prayer is answered. See, prayer is not manipulating God to get Him to do what we want. Prayer is talking to Him in light of what He's already said He'd do. See? They took what God had said to them and they applied it to their situation. They didn't grab anything they wanted from the Bible. Yeah, we'll just stick that here. And God, if you don't do what we want, you don't exist. For us, the church, the body of Christ, we must pray the Pauline way. Or we don't have a prayer of understanding and doing God's will. Paul's epistles, Romans through Philemon. That is what God is doing today. We want to do the will of God. We find out what God is doing. And by faith, do that. Romans through Philemon. Romans through Philemon. The Lord's heavenly ministry. Not his earthly ministry, his heavenly ministry. Paul is our apostle, Romans 11 13. We have to repeat it over and over and over and over. If we are to be rescued, from the shackles of denominational works, religion, bondage. Acts 4. They're all filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts 4, 31. The filling with the Holy Ghost. That sounds like Acts 2. Acts 2 and Acts 4 are parallels. The filling with the Holy Ghost, they're under the control of God the Holy Spirit. This is another picture of new covenant blessings and unity, oneness. The Holy Spirit empowers them. They speak the word of God with boldness. You can look at Ezekiel 11, Ezekiel 36. I will put my spirit in them and cause them to walk in my ways. That's the new covenant. Here is a preview of the new covenant. As in Acts 2, in Acts 3, and Acts 4, see? Acts 4.32, finish the chapter. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. This is also similar to Acts 2. Acts 2. Forty two. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. 
And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Acts 4.32 The multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Remember John 17. John 17. John chapter 17. John 17.11 17, Father, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. One, oneness. Verse 21, that they all may be one. Thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Ezekiel 34, Ezekiel 37, the new covenant. In the kingdom, Israel and Judah are united, one nation, one kingdom again. Sound Bible doctrine unites them. The one shepherd and the one fold, John 10 and John 11, that they all might be gathered in one one nation Israel again. One kingdom of priests. See? Early Acts is a preview of the new covenant of the kingdom restoration of Israel. Sin, Satan, false doctrine have divided them. Now, sound Bible doctrine, the Holy Spirit has united them. They are of one heart and one soul. Acts 4.32 Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. No selfishness here. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Grace. Look at Jeremiah 31. 31 through 34, there's the new covenant. But read Jeremiah 31, verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The grace of the new covenant. Great grace was upon them all. Favor. Favor. This is a preview of the new covenant again. Although the new covenant will not be inaugurated until Christ's second coming. This is what kingdom living is like. Acts 2. Acts 3. Acts 4. Acts 4.33 And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Remember resurrection? Begotten? Begotten? Psalm 2 verse 7 Acts 13 33 and 34 Resurrection. The resurrection of Christ. God has resurrected him. See? That's another major theme in early Acts. The resurrection. The miracles 
prove Jesus is alive. God has raised him up, Acts 2. God has raised him up, Acts 3. Acts 4, God has raised him up. He's alive and he's coming back to reign. Acts 4, 34. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is, being interpreted, the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now that's all positive. The negative will be in chapter 5. Ananias and Sapphira. There's the negative aspect. We'll save that for our next study. They had all things common. I taught this in depth in chapter 2. New Testament video 334, Acts lesson 10. I won't go into as much detail here because my time is limited. New Testament video 334, Acts lesson 10. The having all things common the selling of the lands and the houses and bringing the prices, the proceeds, to the apostles and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Remember, that's not communism. Communism is materialistic and atheistic. These are neither materialists nor atheists. If you recall, and I have to summarize here, I taught this back in Acts Lesson 10. You will recall, during Christ's earthly ministry, Matthew 6, you cannot serve God in Mammon, the Sermon on the Mount. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, not on the earth. Also Luke 12, Luke 12. The whole chapter. Read the whole chapter. Luke 12. Verse 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things, these material things, shall be added unto you. Have your priorities in order, Israel. Seek first the kingdom of God. That's Matthew 6. Seek it first. Here it's seek the kingdom of God and all these things, material things. See, get your spiritual matters in order first. And then, Israel... The material matters will take care of themselves. God will take care of you. Luke 12, 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What kingdom? Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupted. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Sell what you have and give alms. Matthew 6, Matthew 19, Mark 10, 
Luke 18, remember the rich young ruler? How hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. He had great possessions and his great possessions had him. If thou wilt be perfect, sell all that thou hast and give to the poor and follow me. Ah, uh, no thanks. You see, the Antichrist is on his wing in the prophetic program. Material riches are a hindrance. During Christ's earthly ministry in early Acts, you read in Revelation 13, the Antichrist has an economic system in place where unless they submit to him, they can neither buy nor sell. But if the saints relinquish their wealth now, there are no material riches to cause them to follow Antichrist. They don't have anything. They gave it up. Matthew. Matthew 19. 27. Peter said to the Lord, Behold, we have forsaken all and follow thee. What shall we have therefore? 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. That's in the kingdom. See? Read Matthew 4, Mark 1, Luke 5. The disciples forsook all. They left their fishing boats, fishing businesses, fishing nets behind. They'll get all that material wealth back and more in the kingdom. Remember Job and what happened with poor Job. At the end of the war, at the end of Job, remember what happened? Job 42. They laid down the prices of their possessions that they've sold they laid down the prices at the apostles' feet. Acts 4, 35. That's not our economic orders. Read 2 Thessalonians 3. If a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. In 1 Timothy 5, a man is to provide for his own and those of his house. Acts 2 and Acts 4 have nothing to do with God's purpose and plan for us. If we rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 Distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Not want, but need. Acts 4.35 And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now as per the law of Moses here, Joseph Barnabas. The law of Moses, Numbers 18. 
Joseph Barnabas is a Levite. He's of the priestly tribe, the tribe of Levi. He's a Jew. Numbers 18, 20. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Thou shalt have no inheritance in their land, neither shalt thou have any part among them. I am thy part and thine inheritance among the children of Israel. The Levites were to have no inheritance in the land of Palestine. Verse 24. Among the children of Israel they shall have no inheritance. The Levites. Okay. Deuteronomy 10. Verse 9. We're wrapping this up. Deuteronomy 10, verse 9. I'm sorry I'm going long. Deuteronomy 10, 9. Wherefore, Levi hath no part nor inheritance with his brethren. The Lord is his inheritance, according as the Lord thy God promised him. The Levites were not to own any land in the land of Palestine. Acts 4 here, Joseph Barnabas owns land. He's a Levite, and he owns land. Well, perhaps they no longer observe that Levitical regulation here. But also remember Acts 4, 36, the country of Cyprus. This is not the promised land. This is on an island outside of the promised land. Let me pause a second. I'm back again. Do you remember my hand-drawn map of the Mediterranean world that I had for you back in chapter 2? of Acts. Here, of course, if you can read, here is the promised land. Here is Judea and Jerusalem, right here. Cyprus is out in the Mediterranean Sea. It's about 60 miles away from Syria, west of Syria. 100 kilometers. Cyprus is right here. Okay. So Joseph Barnabas, whose name means son of consolation, Barnabas. Joseph Barnabas has land here on the island of Cyprus. He sells the land and he brings the proceeds to the apostles. That's the leadership of the Messianic Church. Now one other note and then we're finished. Barnabas will be seen again. Joseph Barnabas. Read Acts 9, Acts 11, Acts 12, Acts 13, Acts 14, Acts 15. 1 Corinthians 9, 6, Galatians 2, Colossians 4. Barnabas is a member of the Messianic Church who become the Apostle Paul's ministry companion, co-worker. In Acts 14, Barnabas is named an apostle. We'll see Barnabas again. For now, he drops out of sight. In our next study, chapter 5, we will see the negative of the sharing and having all things common. Ananias and Sapphira, well, they're materialistic. They're idolaters. 
and they will be judged harshly. That's our next study, chapter 5. This is enough. Thank you, Father God, for Acts 4. And now we move into chapter 5. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen.